Beamer code for the BMW X1 and how to use it coming up right now. All right, so I've been asked a few times already how to use the BMW Beamer code app for the BMW X1. There's a bunch of videos already out on how to use them for certain BMW cars, but not specifically for the BMW X1. This is actually a very simple app to use, which you can see right here. The app itself, it is free to download, but the only thing is that most people won't tell you is once you actually download the app for free, you have to pay $29.99, well, I think it's $30, um, for the actual app to use. So apart from the BMW app, you also have to invest in getting a Bluetooth enabled OBD2 reader for your car. The one that I'm using today is the VPeak. I'll show you guys real quick. OBD2 Bluetooth reader for my BMW X1. And I'll make sure to leave a link down below for you guys to check out if you guys wanna buy the Saxon one that I'm using today. All right guys, so the way that you actually use the app and I'll show you guys right now is you will plug in this, um, what I'm using is the VPeak OBD2 reader into your OBD2 port. And then from there, you can start picking and choosing the features that you want to upload or code to your car, specifically the X1. And you can choose which ones you like, which ones you don't like, things you can turn off, things you can turn on. Real, real cool little features. Not, nothing too particularly for the transmission, uh, engine, anything like that. It's more like little luxury and hidden features that the BMW kind of has that you don't normally get directly from the dealership itself. So that's why a lot of people use the BMW Beamer Code app in order to unlock a lot of these features. All right guys, so we'll go ahead and jump right into it and I'll show you guys how to use it. All right, so we're already inside the car. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and open up your BMW Beamer Code. Go ahead and pay for it, do everything you gotta do, sync it up, you, all that kind of stuff. Go ahead and have it set up and ready. So when you go ahead and plug everything up, you're good to go. You don't have to be scrambling around to get everything ready to go. All right guys, so I'll show you with my phone real quick and excuse my car being dirty and my sandals. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you guys with my, with my phone real quick. This is what you do. My phone's acting up. All right, so I'm, I'm double recording now, so I got on both sides real quick. So I'm going to show you guys with my phone. It might be a little bit easier on how to actually go ahead and plug in your OBD2 port, your OBD2 uh, reader into your OBD2 port reader. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and use my phone real quick. It's just a little bit easier. So I'm going to show you guys how to use the VP. Go ahead and plug it in into your OBD2 port reader. Super simple, guys. So let me show you real quick. So you come in here, and please don't mind me using my socks and sandals. All right. Right there. So right here, let me see if I can get some, some type of light. Okay. So right here where I'm pointing at, okay, this is the OBD2 port. So you're going to go ahead and plug this in. And once you do plug it in, you will have a little blue light that will come on. And put you guys down real quick. Okay. So you guys can see the little light comes on. That just lets you know that it is plugged in and ready to be used. All right, guys. So now I'm back. So once you have the OBD2 reader plugged in, go ahead and turn on your car. Not fully. Just on your on position. And wait for the, the beeping, the typical BMW beeping to go off. Okay, guys. So once the car is ready to go, you're going to go ahead and open up the app. Okay guys, so once you guys are ready to connect, okay, all you're gonna do is go ahead and hit the connect button on there. Make sure you don't hit demo mode. So go ahead and hit the connect button, okay? And it's gonna bring up the different adapters that you can use for your car. The one that I'm using specifically is the VPeak OBD Check BLE. That's the one that's already highlighted. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect now. So it's gonna be connecting. Give it a couple seconds, let it connect. Okay, and then you're gonna go and scroll through and choose the one specifically for your car. So of course I got the E84 X1, it's already hot, checked in, so hit continue. It's gonna read the VIN, okay, one second. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, it's not too many options that you have for the BMW X1, it is an older car. So you're not gonna have like a sport transmission that you got on like the F30s and so, and so forth, and specific things like that. But some of the things, the features that I saw that are real helpful for me were the angel eyes. You can uh, bump them up the brightness to 100%. Um, you can have it with the folding mirrors will fold every time you put your car in park or I think you turn off your car, one of those two. And you can also have the, um, the DVD playing while you're actually in motion, which is called in motion, I believe. So let me just go through real quick, guys. So let's do the first one, air conditioning. Okay. 
So here we are. So the air conditioning, this is the stuff that you have and do not go into expert mode unless you know 100% what it is that you're doing. It gets a little bit more complicated once you go into expert mode. So right here for the air conditioning, you have three options. Well, actually you have four. So you have air conditioning, setting memory, air, air circulation, setting memory, air conditioning on in auto mode, and then auto start stop function memory. My car does not have the auto start stop function. So we're not even gonna worry about that. Next one is the airbag control unit, okay? For the airbag control unit, it's gonna read all that too. So of course, you don't have, again, many options for the actual airbag control unit. All you have is two options. So all you see here is seat belt reminder driver's seat active and seat belt reminder passenger seat active. I'm actually gonna take that off because sometimes I have my dog with me in the passenger side. So I'm gonna have that and uh, non-active, the way in case, you know, she is sitting in the thing, the, the chime is always going off. I do not want that going off. So keep that on non-active. And on the top right hand corner, you're going to see where it says code. So every time that you go ahead and choose something to code on the top right hand side, you're going to see where it says code. Make sure that you hit that code button before you get off of this specific screen. Because unless you do that, unless you hit the coding button, it would not code it to your car. So let's go ahead and just code it real quick. So hit the, the, the button where it says code real quick. Okay. This main is going to pop out, be whatever you got to read, and then just hit start coding. Okay, so now it's going to be coding. And then it's going to restart the ECU, clear any errors, and that kind of stuff. And you can hear the chime going off. Okay, so it's going to clear any errors. Give it, give it a couple of seconds, and that's it. It says coding successful. So you guys are good to go. Hit OK. All right, so once you hit OK, go ahead and hit the back button. That is therefore coded. Um, you have anti-theft alarm, anti alarm system. Excuse my English, I'm from Puerto Rico. Okay, so once that, you can go ahead and see, you know, acoustical confirmation. Um, I haven't really messed around with too much of this stuff yet. I just kind of looked in, looked through it. Alarm system, alarm with high beam, alarm hazard flasher, alarm duration. You can do all that custom. Uh, car access system. Okay, so right here you have way more options than you do normally. So this is when you can kind of get to play, pick and choose and play around with what you think is good for your car. You have convenient opening, convenient opening with remote control, convenient opening delay, convenient opening delay rear windows. So you have all kinds of stuff. Let me see what else you got here. Something I really, closing, delay sunroof, doors and the windows. So you can do selective central locking, lock doors automatically, um, automatic lock time, Easy access. I haven't really, like I said, I haven't really messed around with too much with this stuff. That's kind of just kind of reading it and going through, see what works and doesn't work. Of course, I don't have the option to open up the rear window. Um, the key, you have comfort key eject, comfort start. So it all depends what you want. Interior lighting with remote control. Um, panic alarm with remote control. This is all just for your alarm system. Theft prevention, comfort access deactiv deactivation. It disable the comfort access for theft prevention. Please note that this requires a kit to be inserted into the start engine. Okay. So you have, like I said, all kinds of different options. You just go through specifically whichever ones that you want. A lot of the stuff is like little nitpicking what you want to do to it. So just going through, this is some of the options, guys, that you have. And just pick and choose what you want to do. Foot wheel module. Let's see what this one does. Okay. So for the foot, foot wheel module, now you have the options for your angel eyes, which I already have it set on very high. Um, so right here, you know, you can have it completely off from very low to very high. And what that's going to do is it's going to affect the, the brightness of the angel eyes. So when you have them on during the um, daytime, they're super bright. It just looks cool, honestly. That's the only reason why people even do it, to be honest. So I have them both set to on very high, parking and standing. Check control on notifications. So you have, let me see, check control notification, high beam, low beam, fog lights, front turn signals. Enable, disable the check control notification for the fog lights. Okay, let me see. Coming home lights, coming home lights, the lights duration. Da -da -da -da. Cancel coming home lights, not active, extend coming home lights, coming home lights with remote control. Do, 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 do. Daytime running light, use lights. What is this? I can't even mess with this one. The lights that are used for the daytime running light. Low beam. Okay, so this is a very cool option. So right here you can use what lights you want to have on, 
while in the daytime. So you can have low beams, you dimmed high beam, additional lights only in the uh, Europe, and then additional lights only in US. Actually, I do not know what the Europe ones are. The lights, I just have it on US. I guess we'll just keep it on that. I'll mess with that a little bit later on to see what that works. Daytime running light, fog light brightness, very high. Do not want that because I do not use my fog lights in the daytime. Daytime running light, angel eye brightness, I have that set to very high. Okay, daytime running light, rear light brightness. No, 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 no. Window lift interruption when opening the door. Window lifters deactivation when engine start. Flasher, so you have the sound on flasher. It's active. Turn off fog light with flasher. No. You have the indicators. I do not have LEDs. I think this hard when you have to code them. If you get LED um, bulbs for your car, be it fog lights or real lights or headlights or whatnot, then you have to code them um, specifically for your car. Just keep that in mind, guys, whenever you do up, up, upgrade to LED lighting. So the main ones that I used was the head units, the folding mirrors, and the angel eyes were the main ones that I, that I put on my car. Everything else, you kind of have to see what works and doesn't work, do more research on it. Um, I wish that it had some type of transmission um, coding for this car, but it doesn't. Okay, so not on the head unit display. Let me see what we can do here. Checkbox, rotation, horizontal. So right here where it says video in motion, click on video in motion. So you're gonna want that active. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna activate your, your um, DVD player. So usually you can have it on only when you're in park, not in drive mode. So what this does is it activates it and it enables it so that while you're driving, be careful now. When you're driving, you will have any DVD playing. Um, that's good if you have kids in the back or a passenger. Not too good if you're the one driving. So just keep that in mind. So you have a warning at startup. Not active, turn that off. Take off the warning at startup. Let's code that real quick. Start coding. Okay, let's check it out real quick. All right, coding successful. That's it guys. Get out of there. Instrument cluster. Okay, so right here it says, the first one says digital speed inboard computer. You want that active. What that's gonna do is, in your small little digital cluster between your RPMs and your miles per hour, um, clusters. So what that's going to do is it's going to code it so you can see your MPH as you're driving. So it's a digital um, gauge cluster. Very small, but it's better than nothing, right? Then you can set to your fuel reserve warning. So depending on how low you want it to get, the, the gas light will come on. So I have it set to 50 kilometers, which that will be like 30, 35 or so um, miles. And then warnings for speed limit warnings, so you can set it to like a certain um, um, miles per hour or kilometers, and then a warning will come on. Not very many options for, I mean, for the 30 bucks, I believe it's worth it, but you don't really get that many options compared to most newer BMWs, especially with the 8-speed transmission minus the 6-speed. So I believe they don't have any option for that to code, but it's fine. So that's it, guys. I'm ending here. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or want more in-depth detail about how to use the BMW coding, it's pretty self-explanatory. You pick and choose what you want and then code it. Super simple. The car itself will restart the ECU every time you do code it. You will not have any errors. I haven't had any error codes since I've coded and it's about it's been about a month now. So no issues whatsoever, guys. 30 bucks for this. I'll leave a link down below. And super simple, please leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions. And if you guys just wanna reach out to me, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions and just chat it up. All right guys, I'm ending here. Catch you guys for the next one, all right? Later guys, bye.